I love you. I know. Hey guys, hope you're going well. So you know the drill by now. Before we get started, I really need to give you the full disclosure between me and you and let you know that there are going to be no plot spoilers here. Scouts Honor, I'm going to do my very, very, very best. I don't want to give any spoilers away. You guys know I, I'm not into spoilers. I personally, they really do affect me. Like for example, before I saw the movie and it premiered in LA and everyone started tweeting about it, my Twitter feed blew up. I decided that's it. Social media blackout, closing down all apps until I could see it myself. I was not about to get spoiled by them Twitter trolls out there. Don't get too deep into this, but for some reason I decided to challenge myself and avoid seeing all the trailers, all the marketing campaigns. I didn't read any articles, fan theories, nothing. It was just how I wanted to challenge myself to experience it without having any preconceived notions. And it was a good choice. So let's dive into this review of Avengers colon Infinity War open parentheses spoiler free close parentheses. I am a superhero movie fan first and foremost remember that. So if the characters are all there there's a little bit of story development we've got some bomb ass action scenes some life or death stakes with the universe about to end and a bit of comedic fan service. That's all the movie really has to do for me. It gets a passing grade just on that alone and doesn't really have to do much more. Infinity War picks up in the MCU timeline right on the heels of Thor Ragnarok. So Thanos and his crew are after what we know already that Loki has stolen, which is the Tesseract. And we know that Thanos is after the Tesseract because it is in fact an Infinity Stone and he is collecting all six stones for his glove of destruction because he wants to end the world and shit. Thanos is a villain with such a huge build up. They have been teasing Thanos over the course of so many movies of so many years. It was back in 2012 with the first Avengers movie where we very first met Thanos and knew that he was a big boss coming. So he's not one of these intermediate interim level bosses. He is the big end of the game. You finished Mario 64 Bowser boss. It has been a long tease to finally meet Thanos and as a big bad villain, he does not disappoint Josh Brolin as Thanos is so good. And I think the Russo brothers, the directors have done a fabulous job by really making the movie very much about Thanos because it's Thanos versus the rest of the world versus a multitude, like a mind blowing multitude of like nearly 20 superheroes all coming together, all fighting for screen time. And we want to see them all equally in bits and pieces. So to have it focus on Thanos quite heavily is really a smart move. And the movie does rely really heavily on the fact that you've already gotten to know and care for and trust these characters in their previous own sort of standalone movies. And now they're coming here to this collective movie. So it's a lot to process. There is a lot of characters. Some of them only get one line when they really deserve a lot more, but there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of players in this game and just not enough screen time. Marvel has made the smartest decision to just play to its strengths because it's keeping the story really, really simple so that we can focus on what they do best, which is building those characters. Sorry, the characters have already been built in previous movies. It's taking those pre-built characters, putting them all together in one movie and relying on those relationships that we already know and have come to love so much so many actors, so many brilliant actors all coming together in one movie. It's super exciting. It feels new just because we're seeing all these characters step into each other's world in a way that we've never really seen before. And I think that's a really bold and clever, clever move. It's pretty cool too. There was an emphasis on those female characters. They were definitely not left behind. They were very noticeably given enough to do like, I really did appreciate that. There's Black Witch, there's 
Black Witch. What did I just say? Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Okoye, there's Mantis, and Gamora. They're all really featured and I think that's awesome because we are 19 movies in now and I'm waiting for Marvel to do a female-led superhero movie. Come on, Marvel, 19 movies, you can do it. That, my friends, is about as deep as we can go for today, but I really just wanted to share with you my first initial thoughts, my first initial review, having just seen the movie earlier today. But don't worry, we're going to be taking a deeper dive. I'm definitely going to be doing a spoiler chat about this one, so I cannot wait to talk to you about it more. Give me a few days to process it all, and let's wait till after opening weekend and more people have had a chance to see it and then we are going to get into it that is it from me guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today don't forget you can also subscribe to my channel here and keep up to date with all things movies and tv and marvel movies we'll be getting there don't worry do as well click that little bell icon and stay notified every time that i post a new video uh thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye